สวัสดีครับ Good evening and a very warm welcome to Thai PBS English News Service. I'm Super Jun Kun s u a n The cost of living continues to be the talk of the town with increases in both the minibus and the interprovincial bus fares that take effect today. While the Commerce Ministry is reviewing its policy on controlling cooked food prices, some product manufacturers have agreed to freeze their prices for the next four months. Manufacturers in several sectors, including commodity products, construction materials, and car tires, met at the Ministry of Commerce today and agreed to freeze their product prices for another four months, ending in September. These manufacturers indicated that the rise in their production costs is mostly due to the higher cost of energy and labor. Nevertheless, they are refraining from increasing their prices because of stiff market competition. The Commerce Ministry, however, will reconsider the cost structures after four months to ensure that product prices are in line with the costs. A subcommittee directly responsible for monitoring the prices of cooked food will also outline its proposals for controlling cooked product prices, which is to be submitted to the cabinet for a second round of consideration. Some food operators, on the other hand, are urging the government to produce more satang coins. Explaining that the reason why cooked food prices jump by a whole baht each time is because of the difficulty of providing change of 25 or 50 satang. Meanwhile, following the Central Land Transport Control Commission's approval today, the minibus fare has been adjusted to 8 baht, up from 6 baht 50 satang. Similarly, Bangkok's local minibus fare has increased from 5 baht 50 satang to 7 baht. And to nine baht for late night hours between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. The interprovincial bus fare has also been raised by four satang per kilometer. However, the deputy permanent secretary at the transport ministry revealed that Bangkok-run buses will only see a one baht upward adjustment in fares when NGV hits nine baht fifty satang per kilogram. A former finance minister projects that if Wirapong Ramangun, a man with good ties with the government, is elected to the chair of the Bank of Thailand's executive board, he might attempt to alter some of the central bank's policies, particularly the, the ones relating to the exchange rates. Gonjati Kawanit, former minister of finance, commented that Wirapong Ramangun's credentials for BOT chairmanship were earned by his success at fixing the economy during the General Prem Tirasulanon administration in 1984. However, Gon believes that the conflict between Wirapong as an advisor to the government and Prasan Tairat Warakun, governor of the central bank, as portrayed by the media, might affect public confidence in the candidate, including the independence of the central bank. Still, former minister believes that the uh, that Weir Pong's maturity will help overcome these concerns. At the same time, his possible appointment might bring out about policy changes within the Bank of Thailand or BOT. Additionally, Gon says that the new chairman of the BOT has to address any differences with the BOT governor immediately and has to first direct policy on the exchange rate. Furthermore, the new chairman has to urge the government to pay more attention to the problem of rising commodity prices and cost of living, rather than intervening in the central bank's work. Earlier on, a member of the central bank selection committee indicated that the committee took only three hours to vet the qualifications of Vira Pong, whose name was put forward by the Minister of Finance. Meanwhile, the central bank submitted two candidates, Namely, former BOT chairman Mom Ratchawong Chatumongkorn Sonakun and former rector of Tulalongkorn University Tien Chai Kiranan. The selection committee later elected Wirapong Ramangkun in a 6 to 1 vote to assume the chairmanship of the Bank of Thailand's executive board. Wirapong, who is the chairman of the Strategic Committee for Reconstruction and Future Development, is to replace Mom Ratchawong Chatumongkorn, whose term ended last month. The Secretary of the Selection Committee will now forward the decision to Finance Minister Kitirat Naranong for further consideration before submitting it to the Cabinet for final ruling.
as the constitution drafting is now in process. And yesterday, Parliament concluded rules for the recruitment process of the members of the Charter Drafting Assembly, or CDA. The Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies of Mahidon University has declared that the Institute will invite the public to join the deliberation in seven provinces in an effort to get the people's participation in drafting the new Charter. Meanwhile, the opposition claims that the government is aiming to benefit from changing the law. The Charter Drafting Assembly, or CDA, will consist of 99 members. 77 members will come from elections in each province, and the rest will be academics and experts recruited by Parliament. The Institution of Human Rights and Peace Studies is preparing for public deliberation in seven provinces, including Chiang Mai, Pisanulo, Khon Kaen, Ubon Rasathani, Nakhon Si Thamarat, Narathiwat, and Bangkok in an effort to create understanding about the charter among the people, as well as to allow people to raise their problems before electing the members of CDA. Lecturer from the Institute of Human Rights and Peace Studies at Mahidon University explains that the Institute is trying to encourage people's participation to prevent the charter from being taken advantage of by politicians. Identify important issues that should be discussed and deliberate for giving an input to the process. If and when Thai people elect a new constituent or a new uh, constitutional drafting council or assembly, then the people would be ready to have enough information to advise the assembly about what they really want. The Institute has already identified eight main issues which they believe should be discussed in the public arena, including rights and freedoms, state policies, parliamentary issues, cabinets and courts, independent agencies, local administration bodies, public participation in politics, and the power to investigate and review government's activities. Meanwhile, opposition chef Web Surin Lasana Visit claims that the opposition was trying to protect the charter drafting process from being the way for an amnesty for former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat, and the opposition believes that the Constitutional Court should approve the new charter rather than the House Speaker. Gan Gon Raktam, Thai PBS. For the past decade, forest encroachment in Got Samui has persisted, resulting in the loss of at least 10,000 rai of rich forest land. The Khao Thai Kwai National Park in particular has been severely depleted. Forest encroachment on Got Samui of Suratani Province is occurring in two distinct ways. First, forest is encroached upon by the commercial property investors who hold fake land title deeds in pursuit of profit through development of resorts and hotels. Second is by non-Thai workers who invade forest land to use for agriculture. Major General Wan Chanat Gyaojeren says that the local authority is too lenient to uh, enforce the law, so non-Thai workers continue to invade the forest and cut down trees to clear space for agriculture. He says that the forest intrusion has severely damaged water source vital for the local consumption. At least 10,000 rai, or 1,600 hectares of rich forest, have been cut down. While Pisit Promchan, a former village chief, says that since 2005, both foreign and Thai investors have been expanding their ownership of mountainous areas for profit seeking, apparently with the approval of local authorities. Meanwhile, Ram Ne Chai Kwang, mayor of Got Samui, explains that investors have brought up all the land near the coast. He blames a deficiency in issuing land title deeds is the root cause of the worsening forest degradation. Excuse me. He blames a deficiency in issuing land title deeds as the root cause of the worsening forest degradation and the lack of encroachment of the forest land. For over a decade, this forest encroachment in Gosamui district of Suratani has resulted in the loss of 10,000 rai of prime forest particularly in the Khao Thai Kwai National Park, which has almost been completely, completely depleted. 
Without practical solutions, the health of the forest will deteriorate further, and sources of water for consumption will be further jeopardized. The Eastern People's Network is asking the government and parliament to push ahead with practical implementation of the disaster prevention, mitigation, and rehabilitation plans, as well as demanding that the fact-finding committee reveal their findings. The explosion and chemical leak at BST Elastomer and Aditya Birla chemical plant in Maptaput, which resulted in deaths and injuries, has prompted the Eastern People's Network to ask the PM to impose strict measures on chemical plants and those responsible for public safety to prevent such problems, while also demanding that the fact-finding committee reveals the truth about the incidents which occurred in their hometowns. Meanwhile, Surachai Lian Wun Le Chai, chairman of the Senate Committee on Natural Resources and Environment, revealed that the committee will also conduct a field survey tomorrow to review the urban planning of Rayong province, as he claims the planning is the cause of the severe effects of the explosion because the chemical plants are located near the residential areas. I think the first, uh, the government should be used uh, the, uh, the law by the control uh, building law, because in Thailand we have uh, the control building law, um, but um, we do not use this law uh, in the uh, strictly. Uh, uh, so I, I think that this by this way we we can control the urban, um, especially for the petrochemical uh, factory. The 2010 to 2014 National, National Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Plan, according to the network, should be taken seriously, while rehabilitation and compensation should be just, fair, and carried out systematically. They are also seeking legal procedures to be strictly imposed and safety standards enforced. Residents along the Thai Myanmar border of Tak province are reporting that ethnic groups on the other side of the border are extorting money from Thai businesses, which use the Mui River for logistics. Some are paying monthly fees of up to 300,000 baht. Even though General Nat Kham Mui, leader of the Karen Gotuba group, has opened the 12 border checkpoints connecting Tak province with Myanmar, Many Thais are still not crossing over for trade as they fear for their safety since DKBA soldiers remain near the border. There are reports that current people under the leadership of Makong are extorting money from Thai businesses operating along the river which divides the two countries. Some big businesses are paying a monthly fee of 300,000 baht. This may also be retaliation for the Thai authorities having added General Nakamoy to the list of top 25 most wanted drug lords. Meanwhile, tourism along Tak's border is also taking a big hit. However, General Che Ta Tanajaro, former army commander and president of the Thai Myanmar Cultural and Economic Association, says that the tense situation between Thais and ethnic groups will improve soon as Myanmar is opening its doors to the international community. A police spokesperson has revealed that the two police officers who were involved in an armed robbery of a cash delivery van back in March have both been dismissed from the police force. However, one of the two former policemen who was scheduled to turn himself in today was a no-show. Police Major General Pia Utayo, a police spokesperson, disclosed today that the court has issued arrest warrants for all six suspects in the cash truck robbery. Two of the warrants are for Police Colonel Pichit Gromprasit, Superintendent of Sayangan Police Station in Gampang Pet Province, and Sergeant Narai Tipri Chathon of the Consulans Interrogation Police. Former Sergeant Narai is now under arrest, while Police Colonel Pichit, who was scheduled to turn himself in today, decided not to show up. Back in late March, four armed men robbed a cash delivery security van delivering cash to a branch of Kasigan Thai Bank in Singburi province. Two million baht in cash was stolen while one of the security van crew was shot and injured. Closed circuit cameras led to the capture of three robbers and their subsequent interrogation revealed that two policemen devised the plan for the robbery and provided the weapons.
Bangkok residents are asking the government and the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration if the city's sewers are ready to handle massive amounts of flood water if it comes, since some areas are already flooded after just a few hours of heavy showers. Whenever heavy rain hits northern Bangkok, Pahonyutin soys 58 through 70 flood, and sometimes it takes two days for the water to drain away. Locals claim that sand, from sandbags used during the 2011 floods, are clogging the sewers. They now wonder if the government and the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or BMA, should clear the sewers before the heavy rains arrive with the wet season. The BMA's sewer department has installed water pumps in communities in that area, but the unit claims roads are built at different levels, making it difficult to drain water away. The BMA claims it will make sure the dredging of canals and sewers will be completed in time for the arrival of this year's rains. Hugh Adams, Thai PBS. And that's all the time we have for tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. We'll see you again tomorrow night. I'm Super Jungle Insulan. Sadiqah.